Dawn arrives, and we survive the night. We are victorious. And though this victory came at great cost, we must remember none of us would be here were it not for the heroism of these good folk beside me. I thank you, good sir. Truly the Maker smiled on us when he sent you here in our darkest hour. Surely these people deserve some small celebration, don't you think? There is time yet. Let us bow our heads and give honor to those who gave their lives in defense of Redcliffe. Murdoch of Redcliffe, Mayor and beloved father, we salute you. You and so many others who have perished here, walk with he who is your maker. Long may you know the peace of his love. With the Maker's favor, the blow we delivered today is enough for me to enter the castle and seek out your Arl. Be wary and watch for signs of renewed attack. We shall return with news as soon as we are able. Now we've no time to waste. Meet me at the mill. We can talk further there. Odd how quiet the castle looks from here. You would think there was nobody inside at all. But I shouldn't delay things further. I had a plan. To enter the castle after the village was secure. There is a secret passage here, in the mill, accessible only to my family. Perhaps I should have gone into the castle earlier, but I could not leave the villagers. Maker's breath. Egan. Thank the Maker, you yet live. Isolde, you're alive. How did you... What has happened? I do not have much time to explain. I slipped away from the castle as soon as I saw the battle was over, and I must return quickly. And I need you to return with me, Tiga. Alone. What? I... Who is this man, Tigan? You remember me, Lady Isolde, don't you? Alistair. Of all the... Why are you here? They are Grey Wardens, Isolde. I owe them my life. Pardon me, I... I would exchange pleasantries, but... Considering the circumstances... Please, Lady Isolde, we had no idea anyone was even alive within the castle. We must have some answers. I know you need more of an explanation, but I, I... I don't know what is safe to tell. Tigan, there is a 
terrible evil within the castle. The dead waken and, and haunt the living. The mage responsible was caught, but still it continues. And I think Connor is going mad. We have survived, but he won't flee the castle. He has seen so much death. You must help him, Tegan. You are his uncle. You could reason with him. I do not know what else to do. I... I beg your pardon? That's a rather impertinent accusation. An evil I cannot fathom holds my son and the husband hostage. I came for help. What more do you want from me? But I do not understand what you mean by this evil. Did it create the walking corpses? What is it? Something the mage unleashed. So far it allows Eamon, Goner, and myself to live. The others were not so fortunate. It killed so many and turned their bodies into walking nightmares. Once it was done with the castle, it struck the village. It wants us to live, but I do not know why. It allowed me to come for you, Tigan, because I begged, because I said Connor needed help. I... I do not know. Oh, Maker's mercy. Could it truly be a demon? I, I can't let it hurt my Connor. You must come back with me, Tigan. Please. For Connor's sake. I promised I would return quickly and only with Tigan. Tigan. I know you could order your men to follow me when I return to the castle. I beg you not to. For Connor's sake. The king is dead, and we need my brother now more than ever. I will return to the castle with you, Isol. <gasps> Thank the Maker. Bless you, Tegan. <gasps> Bless you. I cannot let Isol return alone. Perhaps I can help Connor or Eamon. Perhaps this is really a trap, but this is my family. I must try. I have no illusions of dealing with this evil alone. You, on the other hand, have proven quite formidable. Isolde, can you excuse us for a moment? We must confer in private before I return to the castle with you. Please do not take too long. I will be by the bridge. Here's what I propose. I go in with Isolde, and you enter the castle using the secret passage. My signet ring unlocks the door. Perhaps I will distract whatever evil is inside and increase your chances of getting in unnoticed. What do you say? What choice do either of us have? If your business with Eamon is important, you're going to have to go inside to find him. He's right. Without our Eamon, we'll never get the support we need. Sir Perth and his men can watch for danger at the castle entrance. If you can open the gates from within, they can move in and help you. I don't think there's anyone else who can help you. If you choose not to go, then it's up to me to do what I can. Here is my signet ring. It will open the lock on the door in the mill. Whatever you do, Eamon is the priority here. If you have to, just get him out of there. Isolde, me, and anyone else, we are expendable. Greater evils have been loosed on the world, but I will not argue with you. So we are just going to send him with that woman? It seems so dangerous. One fool plan on top of another. But I can delay no longer. Allow me to bid you farewell. And good luck. You 
and your friends are formidable folk, indeed. I'm sure. What do you need? Ask away. Essentially, they're trained to fight. The Chantry would tell you that the Templars exist simply to defend. But don't let them fool you. They're an army. The other main purpose for a Templar is, of course, to hunt mages. To that end, we train in talents that drain mana and disrupt the spells. Perhaps. But there usually isn't much of an opportunity. The Chantry keeps a close rein on its Templars. We are given Lyrium to help develop our magical talents. Which means we become addicted. And since the Chantry controls the Lyrium trade with the Dwarves... Well, I'm sure you can put two and two together. Thankfully, no. You only start receiving Lyrium once you've taken your vows. You don't need Lyrium in order to learn the Templar talents. Lyrium just makes Templar's talents more effective. Or so I was told. Maybe it doesn't even do that. The Chantry usually doesn't let their Templars get away, either, so they can spread their secrets. I'm a bit of an exception. Lucky me. Yes. Yes. Indeed. Will you stop eating? Oh, I'm hungry. Stuff your face at camp. For now, watch the bloody road. But we've been looking at the road for hours. No travelers all day. Will one of you pay attention? Oi. Who's that? I said something drawing near. Oh! <laughs> 
away. As you wish. Hmm? Let's get started.
Are you sure I can't? I'm sure you'll be pleased. Coming here to see the mages, right? Oh, great. They just love me. Right. Here. You're not looking to get across to the tower, are you? Because I have strict orders not to let anyone pass. Oh, you're a Grey Warden, are you? Prove it. Yes. Oh, a Grey Warden seal. Aha! So you're claiming to be one of those. You know, I have some documents, too. They say I'm the Queen of Antiva. What do you think of that? And if you can't prove you're who you say you are, I'm not letting you in. Anyway, it was nice chatting with you. Now, on your way, right now, go. 
Oh, really? You think Gregor would be upset with me for not letting you in? Wait, actually, he would. Good point. He's the big guy around here. I bet he could deal with one Grey Warden. Alleged Grey Warden. Well, you want that I should take you there now? Come along, I suppose. and I want two men stationed within sight of the doors at all times. Do not open the doors without my express consent. Is that clear? Yes, sir. The doors are barred. Are they keeping people out or in? Now we wait and pray. Well, look who's back. A proper Grey Warden now, are we? Glad you're not dead. Perhaps. Now we're dealing with a situation that doesn't involve you, Grey Warden. I shall speak plainly. The tower is no longer under our control. Abominations and demons stalk the tower's halls. We were too complacent. First Jowan, now this. Don't think I've forgotten your role in Jowan's escape. True enough. We don't know. We saw only demons, hunting Templars and Mages alike. I realized we could not defeat them and told my men to flee. I have sent word to Denerim, calling for reinforcements and the right of annulment. The right of annulment gives Templars the authority to neutralize the Mage Circle. Completely. The Mages are probably already dead. Any abominations remaining in there must be dealt with, no matter what. This situation is dire. There is no alternative. Everything in the tower must be destroyed so it can be made safe again. I assure you... An abomination is a force to be reckoned with, and you will face more than one. Oh, that arrogance hangs about you like some fell cloud, doesn't it? If you succeed, I would owe you much, enough that I would pledge my Templars to your cause. Without word from Denerim, I must determine our course. Surely destroying Darkspawn is a worthy goal. A word of caution. Once you cross that threshold, there is no turning back. The great doors must remain barred. I will open them for no one until I have proof that it is safe. I will only believe it is over if the first enchanter stands before me and tells me it is so. If Irving has fallen, then the circle is lost and must be destroyed. May Andraste lend you her courage, whatever you decide. My wounds! They burn! It's unbearable! I wish this were over. We're running low on supplies and I don't know how much longer we'll last. We need the abominations and demons out of this place, if that's what you mean. If you have anything to trade, that would be helpful too.
on it. Stop right there, outsider. The Dalish have camped in this spot. I suggest you go elsewhere, and quickly. I find that hard to believe. What business could we Dalish possibly have with a group like yours? Seeing as you are obviously no simple trespasser, I will leave it to the Keeper to decide the importance of your business. In the camp, I suggest you keep your hands to yourself, and remember that our arrows are still trained on you. Follow me. Hmm. I see we have guests. Who are these strangers, Mithra? I have precious little patience and less time to spend on outsiders today. I understand, but this one claims to have important business with our people. I see. Tell me, stranger. What business could you possibly have with us? We have our own issues we must deal with, as you can see. You might have simply said so to begin with. Masirinus Mithra, you may return to your post. Manuvinen, Keeper. Now, allow me to introduce myself. I am Zaprian, the Keeper of this clan. Its guide and preserver of our ancient lore. And you are? Manners. From a Shemlin. Interesting. What might be your mission here? Have you come to spread news of the Blight? I had already sensed the corruption spreading in the South. The existence of the Blight is not news to me. I would have taken the clan north by now, had we the ability to move. Sadly, as you can see, we do not. Yes, it seems like you've had your own troubles. What are the odds? So their first reaction to trouble is to flee from it. Curious. 
I imagine you are here regarding the treaty we signed centuries ago. Unfortunately, we may not be able to live up to the promise we made. This will require some explanation. Please, follow me. The clan came to the Brazilian forest one month ago, as is our custom when we enter this part of Ferelden. We are always wary of the dangers in the forest, but we did not expect the werewolves would be lying in wait for us. They ambushed us, and though we drove the beasts back, much damage was done. Many of our warriors lie dying as we speak, even with all our magic and healing skill. We will eventually be forced to slay our brethren to prevent them from becoming beasts. The Blight's evil must be stopped. But we are in no position to uphold our obligations. I am truly sorry. The affliction is a curse that runs rampant in their blood, bringing great agony and then ultimately either death or a transformation into something monstrous. The only thing that could help them must come from the source of the curse itself. And that... that would be no trivial task to retrieve. Within the Brazilian forest dwells a great wolf. We call him Witherfang. It was within him that the curse originated, and through his blood that it has been spread. If he is killed and his heart brought to me, perhaps I could destroy the curse. But this task has proven too dangerous for us. I sent some hunters into the forest a week ago, but they have not returned. I cannot risk any more of my clan. I must warn you that more than werewolves lurk in the Brazilian forest. It has a history full of carnage and murder, you see. Where there is so much death, the veil separating the spirit realm from our own becomes thin, allowing spirits to possess things, living or dead. But if you can indeed help, then I wish you luck. Then I suggest you see Master Verathorn. I will instruct him to put aside some supplies for you, the kind that the hunters use. I must return to caring for my people. Creator's speed on your way. This should be easy enough. What are you doing? You've warped the wood completely. Did you leave it out in the rain? No, Master Ferrothorn. I, uh, I think I just used too much heat. You're not smelting ore like a Durganlin. This is living wood. It requires patience and delicate hands, not more heat. My actions bring me sorrow, Master Ferrothorn. And so they should. Truly the art will be lost to us forever at this rate. Throw away your dead wood and start anew, and I shall speak to our guest. Now then, please forgive my distraction, stranger. Is there something that you need? Yes, yes, the Keeper sent word that you might ask me for such. I took the liberty of assembling some goods that our hunters use. There is a large chest by the Araville, where I put everything we could spare. Feel free to sort through it and take whatever you need. I'm the clan's craftsmaster. It's my responsibility to learn what I can of the ancient elven arts of shaping wood and ore. In truth,